Hello, Year 6, and welcome to Wednesday's Literacy Lesson. Okay, so remember, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, we're doing writing. So we're in our writing book today. Okay, and we're moving on today to pages 6 and 7. Okay, and your learning question is, can I edit a piece of writing? Because this is something that we need to work on. Okay, because I often say to you, oh, that, that doesn't quite make sense. But then sometimes we don't know how to make it make sense. So that's what we're going to go over today. OK, so I'm going to do page six with you. Uh, go through a little bit of page seven and then let you have a go. OK, so we're all in this book today. OK, so every single one of you should have this book. OK, so on page six, then it says every piece of writing you do needs to be edited. This means reading it carefully to check whether it makes sense and if you could make it better. You can make your writing better by removing unnecessary words as well as by splitting or combining sentences. So reading your work aloud can help you see how it could be improved. So removing unnecessary words then, unnecessary means they're not needed. So maybe you might have repeated yourself or it doesn't really add anything to the text. So it's it's unnecessary, it's not needed. Okay, so the first one then says this is a passage from a piece of writing about a trip on the London Eye. Some of the words in the extract don't give the reader any new information. Read the extract, then cross out any words that aren't needed. So I put this extract on my board. Okay, and we're going to go through together figure out which words aren't needed and take them out or cross them out and then you can apply that on question two. So it says, the wheel turned slowly as we slowly rose higher above the skyline. Okay, so we've used slowly here twice. So the wheel turned slowly, so we can get rid of that one. The wheel turned slowly as we rose higher above the skyline. There was an amazing view from the top and it was incredible. Now, if it says there was an amazing view, we already know it was incredible. Incredible and amazing mean the same thing, don't we? So that's just extra information that's not needed. It's not telling us anything different, so we can get rid of that. I could see people in the streets scurrying around like ants in the streets. So we repeated in the streets, so we can get rid of in the streets and put our full stop there. OK, so we don't need in the streets. I could see people in the streets scurrying around like ants. That's fine by itself. OK, my mum took lots of photos. So I brought some photos my mum took into school to show my friends. OK, so my mum took lots of photos. So I brought some photos my mum took. We don't need that, do we? So. We can get rid of photos my mum took. We know who took them. It says it here. So my mum took lots of photos. So I brought some into school to show my friends. OK, and then I've read it out loud to check it still makes sense. OK. So once you've done all your crossing out, go back to the beginning, read through it, check it all makes sense, check there's nothing you haven't missed. OK, question two then. Says these extracts are from a historical story about the Romans. Rewrite each extract to make it better. So this one then says the soldier had been marching for hours and he was tired and sore and he wanted to rest but still had miles to go. Okay, so it's a very, very long sentence. Then you've got a little bit of a clue next to your question. It says, think about whether. You need to split the sentences up or combine them. Combine is put together. OK, so I think we can split some of this up. So the soldier had been marching for hours and he was tired and sore. I think we could pop a full stop there and get rid of and because we don't want too many ands in a sentence, do we? OK, so then you'd rewrite that and pop your full stop after sore. Have a think about what you do for this because we're starting a new sentence. He wanted to rest, but he still had miles to go. And that's fine by itself. OK, so remember, if you put a full stop in, then you're going to need a capital letter, aren't you? 
So now you have a go at the second one on question two by yourself. So it says he had blisters on his toes, full stop, he had blisters on his heels. So I think you could maybe combine those. Have a go. Question three then says this is an extract from a fantasy story about a unicorn. Some suggestions have been written on it in red. Read the extract and then read the suggestions. Okay, so I'm going to read the black words first. Monty crept silently forwards. He was moving towards the unicorn. Suddenly, it bolted into the forest, leaving a trail of glitter behind it as it ran through the forest. Monty sprinted through the trees, desperately trying to keep up. Eventually, exhaustion forced him to stop because he was tired. He watched as the unicorn vanished into the darkness. Okay, so the red bits then, make sure you've got this in front of you, can't quite see it on my board. So here, these two parts have been underlined and it says these two sentences could be combined. Okay, so we could combine that with a conjunction, couldn't we? Monty crept silently forwards. Oh no, you don't need a conjunction actually, you could just have a comma. So you could pop a comma there, change that to a small h. So Monty crept silently forwards, he was moving towards the unicorn. So we've answered that first bit. Suddenly it bolted into the forest, leaving a trail of glitter behind, behind it as it ran through the forest. Now we're repeating about running through the forest. It already told us here that he was bolting through the forest, so we already know that. So it says these words aren't needed, so you can just get rid of that. OK, the next bit then says Monty sprinted through the trees, desperately trying to keep up. Shorten this sentence by changing the comma to a full stop. So that's a nice, easy edit. All you need to do is change that one. But if you change it to a full stop, what have you got to do to the first letter of your next sentence? So eventually exhaustion forced him to stop because he was tired. We don't need because he was tired. Because exhaustion means he's really tired. We already know he's tired. Okay, so we don't need that. So eventually, exhaustion forced him to stop. So you pop a full stop there. Okay, he watched as the unicorn vanished into the darkness. Okay, so your task then is to rewrite this extract using the suggestions to make it better. So really, it tells you what to do. Okay, so you have a go at that. For them says this is an extract from an article persuading people to stop littering. Read the extract, then write on it any changes that are needed to make it better. So just like they did on this one in red, they went through and wrote the changes that you needed to do on it. That's what you're going to do on this one. Okay, so you're going to read through it carefully, think about what needs to change. So litter is unsightly. Litter can harm wildlife. So you could underline these two and you could put up here combine. So those two sentences could be combined, couldn't they? Okay, so litter is unsightly. You could change this to and it. So and it can harm wildlife rather than repeating the words litter. Okay. Animals can become trapped in litter or swallow it if they think it's food, or they can get stuck in it. They can get stuck in it is the same as trapped, okay? So we could probably get rid of that bit, okay? So keep going, read through, think about whether you can get rid of some words, whether you can merge some sentences together, whether you need to make a sentence shorter by putting a full stop in, you put all of your notes on here. Then I've got an extra challenge for you. My extra challenge in your purple book is to then rewrite this passage of information, improving it using what you wrote around the edge. OK. So that's your task for today. So that's everybody's writing task. We're all doing the same. And then once you've done that, we are moving on to word power. So we're doing what, another word power page, moving on to page 29. So we're still bringing words together. Okay, we're carrying on with our kennings that we were looking at yesterday. 
Okay, so you all did an absolutely brilliant job yesterday on your kennings um, for your dog and your parrot. I loved reading them. Some of them were really funny. So your first thing today then says, write four kennings about a dangerous animal below. Can someone else guess what you're describing? So it says, try to use kennings with adjectives, verbs, and nouns. Okay, so if you look up at the top, you've got some examples of kennings about a fire. So you've got a darkness slayer, a deathly dancer, a wood destroyer, and a flame creator. Okay, so my advice to you before you start this question is get your animal in your head. Think about your animal first. Okay, so like we did with the parrot yesterday, we had a parrot, we thought about what a parrot does, we wrote some things about what a parrot does, and then we came up with a kenning. I've got some examples for you. So I've done one, and I want you to have a go at guessing what my dangerous animal is. Okay, so I've got them. So my dangerous animal is a grass eater. They are a deathly predator. They are a dangerous swimmer, and they are a human killer. Okay, so it eats grass, so it's a herbivore. It's a predator, okay? I mean, I said it's a herbivore, but I suppose it's an omnivore, really, because if it eats grass and it eats humans, it eats both, doesn't it? Both herbs and uh, meat. Dangerous swimmer, then, so it's an animal in the water, so it swims. And they kill lots of humans, more than I thought when I looked up this animal. Okay, what do you think my animal might be? Okay, have you got an answer? My animal is a hippo. I don't know how many humans they killed a year. Scary. Okay, so my advice to you when you're doing this one then, is think about your animal. You can always go onto Google and do a little bit of research about your animal if you want to. Um, and then have a go at writing your four kennings. And then before you write in the bottom on the bottom line what you are describing, see if somebody can guess. You can always send it to me if you want and I will have a guess. Okay. Your next part then says read the poem below, then write your own kenning poem. So you've got one about an owl. So it says, night flyer, mouse catcher, swift swooper, day sleeper, silent watcher. Okay, so you've got some ideas for a title, so what you who you could write about. So you could write one about your pet, about your friend, about the mirror, about me, your teacher, or about the sun. Okay, and then have a go at writing one, two, three, four, five kennings about that thing, and it will make a nice kennings poem. Okay. The bottom bit then says, what is your favourite kenning from these pages and why? So that's completely up to you. So you might pick one that you wrote on the previous page about the dog. So it might be face liquor or it might be one of these from the top. It might be one of your own from your kenning's poem or from your dangerous animal. It's up to you. Just make sure you explain why that one's your favourite. Okay. So good luck with all of your literacy work for today. I'm really looking forward to reading your editing work in literacy and these Kenning's poems. So make sure you send me an email of your work and I will see you tomorrow.